All right, so once again, welcome and um, welcome to Certification in You. This session will focus on Microsoft certifications, the certification process, uh, the type of content that is in Microsoft certification, certification paths, um, where you are today, how can you get to the next level of certifications, the certifications that are available right now. Talk a lot of, uh, also about the changes, uh, the programmatic changes in Microsoft certification. So before I get started, uh, I just want to get an idea of who here has any kind of Microsoft certification. Just raise your hand if you already have a Microsoft certification. Okay, most of you. And from those of you who have a Microsoft certification, any of you have had a Microsoft cer certification in the last 12 months? A few of you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So I have a lot of certifications. I've taken uh, Microsoft certification exams for the last... Uh, 16 years, and I think I have somewhere around 60 exams under my belt. I haven't taken one in a few months, but I'm going to change that this week. So my name is David Alfassi. I work for a company called NetLogon Technologies, and uh, we do a lot of work with Microsoft Learning in terms of exam development and courseware development projects. Uh, I was supposed to have a co-presenter with me today, but I don't know. I think he had a good night last night. Uh, moving right along. So certification and you, the title of this session is really about focusing on what certification components will really help you in your career and what are the benefits of certification for you and how it can really help enhance your career and enhance your career goals. So for you, uh, there's definitely lots of benefits to certification and I'm going to go into detail into Microsoft certifications but just at the beginning I just want to talk about it briefly about how it increases your confidence. Once you have that certification, it really allows employers to see that you have a specific knowledge, but it also gives you additional confidence in terms of doing your job. And I truly see that. I work in IT consulting as well, and I see people who are certified usually are a little bit more confident in clicking that next button or that finish button, just because there's this, uh, an additional process of testing and validation that has happened in actually getting to the point where you're certified. The actual studying process also to get certified is a great way of enhancing your knowledge. And that's one of the, of, of the things that gives you a more well-rounded knowledge of a product. I know a lot of people that are IT administrators or consultants that know a very specific aspect of a product. But when they need to get certified, they need to learn about all aspects of the product. Because sometimes I only do tasks A through F in my job, but I need to know A through Z in order to really pass the exam. All right? So that enhancing your knowledge is really a very important part. For your career, there's definitely lots of benefits to certification. It shows a certain commitment to, uh, to knowledge and to learning and to enhance learning. Okay? It shows a certain amount of drive also and career goals. So there's lots of benefits in your career as well for certification. Uh, one of the things that we have here at TechEd is that you can actually take all the exams here at TechEd. And I'll talk a little bit later on about the process for that. But we have an exam testing center on site, and you can actually get certified here this week. For customers, if you're a consultant, there's lots of benefits to certification as well for customers. And definitely the fact that you have now the ability to demonstrate to those customers that you're committed to an enhanced level of knowledge in technology um, and, and for specific products. Now, one of the benefits in certification, the way it's, it's restructured these days, is that it really allows you to segment the product and the technologies that you're specialized in. So if you're going to specialize in, for example, exchange, then you have a messaging certification path and a career path that you can take where you're going to be a true exchange exp expert and demonstrate that through the certifications. So let's go through the different Microsoft certifications that are out there today. Um, the Beginning level, or the first IT pro or developer level certification that we have is the associate level certification. Uh, you may have known that as the MCSA in the past. Uh, MCSA stood, stood for Microsoft Certified Sol uh, Systems Administrator. Today, the MCSA acronym is still available, except it's a Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate. Uh, that acronym is also uh, brought up to the MCSE level, so I'm sure you've heard that the MCSE was brought back uh, last year as part of the Microsoft certification paths. The MCSE is now Microsoft Cer Certified Solutions Expert. And at the top level of certification, we have the Solutions Master. The one word that we find common in there that's pretty much new to Microsoft certification is solutions. And I'll talk about, a little bit more about that later on, but it really kind of represents the fact and the, the switch, the paradigm switch in Microsoft certification in the last couple of years. These are 
in this nice little neat pyramid because that's the growth path. So in order to get your MCSC, you need to have an MCSA. In order to have an MCSM, the master level, you need to have the MCSE. So they build up one on top of the other. And they're really uh, directed towards different technologies and different path. So what is the major change in Microsoft uh, certification in the last couple of years? Well, one of the, the major changes that Microsoft has really listened to customers and has spent a lot of time and a lot of effort into really listening to companies, to what, what are they looking for, and certified individuals, what is it that they're looking for in terms of uh, differentiating themselves from other individual in the job market. And they've used that information in order to enhance the program and enhance the content of the program as well, mainly the questions in the exams. So there's a lot of things here that have changed in terms of the questions in the exams. If you've taken an exam four years ago or, th or five years ago, and you took an exam on Windows 2000 or Windows Server 2003, a lot of people were saying, hey, you know what, these exams are getting a little bit too easy. And Microsoft was focusing on, on certain aspects in question development that was really focused on clarity and making sure they were really, really clear. Um, that's because, you know, it gets translated, you have non-native English speakers that are taking exams. And in order to do that, they were just really trying to be very, very clear. In the process, there was some comments about the exams becoming too easy. Sometimes too clear can be equated to being too easy. So there's an added level of rigor that's been implemented in all the, the exams. Uh, they are much more rigorous than they were a few years ago. Relevance also has been enhanced in the sense that they have done a lot of effort to make sure that they actually target tasks and actions that are being used by IT administrators out in the job field. So those are two things that have very much changed. Also, there's a broader skill set that is being tested. And that goes back to the term of solutions that I just mentioned a few, a few minutes ago, is that now we're testing not only on a product, but on a solution. And the biggest demonstrator of that is the private cloud certification, for example, where you no longer have a certification on just system center. You have a certification on private cloud. So it's really about the entire solution of the system center product, family product, and also other technologies that together provide a private cloud solution. So, for example, Hyper-V, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, uh, Service Manager, Operation Manager. Well, those are a lot of products. They just put them all together, and that's the solution that is being focused on. And that theme is really present in all the technologies and all the certifications. So, uh, there's all these different changes at the content level, more difficult, more rele relevant, um, solution-focused. From a certification standpoint, there's also a recertification requirement now. So now you will have to recertify in order to maintain your uh, MCSE. So the solution focus, as I mentioned, really uh, provides a more complex experience for the test taker as well. So before, where you could just focus on one technology and figure that you could pass the exam just by that one technology, you, you can't really do that anymore. You have to really have experience with different aspects of the technology that sometimes incorporate other products, which is why we call it a solution. The entire solution will encompass that technology, but other products that are also associated to it. Okay? Um, whether that be Windows Server, Windows Client, whether that be Private Cloud with System Center, Exchange Server, collab collaboration with Office 365 and Link and SharePoint, all of those things are solutions that are provided, that are used in the enterprise as a realistic solution. And that's what the certifications are testing on, not just that one product, but the entire solution that is encompassed. By the way, if at any point anybody has a question, just raise your hand, go ahead. There's no official process for that. Uh, cloud focus, the major change also in ensuring that cloud expertise is being tested on in the exam. So if you're going to be taking an exam, you can expect that an exam on Exchange, an exam on Windows Server, whatever it may be, there's going to be the rel re related cloud-based solutions that are going to be tested on as well. Okay? And that is a representation of the skills that are going to be looked at by uh, enterprises. And companies are looking for those skills in individuals right now. So the Microsoft Solutions, uh, Certified Solutions Associate is an individual that has a certain level of expertise. So the level of expertise we're looking for is somebody that has one to two years experience, is somebody that should be uh, uh, thinking about taking the MCSA exams and targeting an MCSA certification. If you have more than that, then that's okay, but that's just the minimum target audience that we're looking at. Typically, an MCSA will require three exams. Okay, that's usually the barometer of how many exams we require for an MCSA. 
The MCSD, the next level, is also equated to the MCSD, the solutions developer. So it's kind of like that same level between the two in terms of expertise and experience. So here we're looking at an individual that has three to five years experience with the product. Okay, so uh, we're looking for a, a deeper uh, level of comfort with the product. So some people tell me, well, you know, you just released the exams on Exchange Server 2013. Nobody has three years experience on Exchange 2013. Uh, so that's not really realistic. Well, we're looking at two things. First of all, there's a lot of the experience from previous technologies. So somebody that has experience with Exchange, for example, is somebody that has a lot of background that's going to be in messaging that's going to cover them to 2013. So you have to equate some of that. As well, you have to look at the lifespan of the certification. So a certification will, will be live until the next product will come out. The certification will still be available, but you can expect that people will be taking those exams for three years, four years, until there's a new version that comes out. So for the lifespan of the technology is, is how you need to look at that. Uh, recertification every two to three years. Uh, the, the exact recertification uh, details haven't been released yet because we don't have a a recertification requirement yet because there's not a new version that's available of what's out there right now for you to recertify on. But you can estimate about two to three years in terms of recertification requirement. And that the goal of that is really to ensure for you that you're going to be able to present your certification as a current certification. A lot of people when they took the MCSE on NT 4.0 advertised themselves as an MCSE for 10 years after that even though they hadn't worked on anything since NT 4.0. And all of a sudden, you put them in front of an Active Directory environment and really didn't know anything about it, but they still presented themselves as an MCSC. So to solve that issue, we now have a recertification requirement to ensure that your skills are current and you can present those current skills to an employer. So these are the different MCSCs and MCSDs that are available. Uh, I actually have boards in the back of the room. These are all the certification paths where you can see exactly to get to these certifications all the exams that we have to, you can take uh, in order to get there. So just as an example, the uh, MCSE server infrastructure, uh, that would be five exams. So three exams to get your MCSA on Windows Server 2012, and then two exams <coughs> to get the MCSE on server infrastructure. Okay? And you can expect that those will focus on Windows Server 2012 server infrastructure solutions, such as DHCP, such as Active Directory, such as uh, uh, Hyper-V deployment and things like that. All right, uh, we've got some MCSD as well for the uh, uh, developer side of things. So these are all the MCSD certifications that are available. There's two of them on Windows Server 2012, server infrastructure and desktop infrastructure. Server infrastructure, again, is more of the server backend things. Uh, desktop infrastructure is really about deploying applications and deploying desktops. So that's a lot about uh, application virtualization and VDI, virtual desktops infrastructure. Private cloud is all system center and all private cloud solutions. Business intelligence is uh, SQL Server 2012 BI. Messaging, that's Exchange Server 2012. Communications, that is Link Server 2013. Sorry, Exchange Server 2013, Link Server 2013. And uh, SharePoint, of course, is SharePoint Server 2013. Um, those last three certifications, uh, that's two exams for the MCSE. But in order to get those two exams for that MCSE, you need to first have passed an MCSA on Windows 2012. So there's always a foundation for that MCSE, and the foundation is the MCSA. So in total, to get an MCSE messaging on Exchange, for example, you need five exam total. The two Exchange exam, and then the three Windows Server 2012 MCSA exams. Okay? And that's a, a, a common theme in all the MCSAs, is you can expect about five exams total. Right? Any questions about that? Okay, so far? Perfect. MCSD. Uh, different MCSD certifications, uh, about the same number of exams as well. Uh, Windows Store apps, really focused on developing applications for the Windows Store. Web application, that's Windows.net. And application lifecycle management, I really don't know a lot about that one. Something that requires code. All right. So, Microsoft Certified Solutions associate Windows 8, uh, the MCSA Windows 8 does not have an associated MCSE. Okay? 
I'm going to repeat that. You cannot be an MCSC on Windows 8. There's only an MCSA. So those are two exams, 687 and 688, focused with configuring, installing, managing uh, Windows desktops. Now, I have here in my slide the course numbers that are associated with each exam. And one of the changes that Microsoft Learning has done in the past year is they've actually included the exam number in the course number. So if ever you want to take a course from an MCT, a Microsoft Certified Trainer, register for a course anywhere in the world where there is a Microsoft um, um, Certified Training Center, you can go and take the course based on the exam number. So you know you want to pass exam 688, well there's a course called 2688. And you know that the content of that course will cover that exam. Okay? So that's a change that they've done to, to ensure that uh, customers can better identify what courses would be good for them. Yes, sir? But there are some exams in the past uh, where it would have been covered by multiple courses. So then how do the course numbers add to or match? OK, so the question is, sometimes there's some exams that are the content is covered in multiple courses. So how do they do that? Well, they don't anymore. Uh, today, one course, one exam. Okay. Uh, you can have multiple exams and multiple courses that will cover certification, but one course, one exam. Windows Server 2012, three, uh, sorry, win, um, uh, MCSA on Windows Server 2012, three exams, 410, 411, 412. Uh, really, I look at those as one big exam. And I look at those three exams together as one big Windows 2012 exam. They're just covering different aspects of the product. So 410 talks about configuring and installing Windows. So that would be the basis and where you would start. 411 is a lot of the administration tools and the, the uh, uh, network administration and the administration tools. And configuring advanced Windows Server services uh, 412 goes a little bit more, enhances some services that would not be available in all environments. Uh, things like Hyper-V and uh, things like, um, I'm running out of examples really quickly here. IPAM. Was that? IPAM. IPAM, thank you. Clustering. Uh, clustering is actually covered in another exam. Uh, I'm not sure if it's covered in that one. Uh, but anyways, each one of these exams, uh, and I'm trying to think of those at the top of my head, but each one of those exams has a list of objectives that are covered in them that are listed on the Microsoft site. And by the way, if you have a Windows Phone, there's also a Windows Phone app that lists all of the Microsoft certification exams and all of the components in each exam that are tested in each exam. Uh, if you just look at, make a search for MCP in the Windows Store, you'll find it. So, then we've got the uh, MCSE server infrastructure. Again, there's two more exams, 413, 414. Here we're looking about the advanced infrastructure. Uh, so again, more advanced configuration of DHCP and more advanced configuration of clustering and more advanced configuration of Hyper-V and, and things like that. You'll have some system center in, in there as well because again, we're focused on the solution and not necessarily the product. 415, 416, as I mentioned, desktop infrastructure and application deployment. Uh, so this is about packaging application, deploying applications, and uh, deploying lots of desktops. So once I've got those two exams, I pack them on top of my MCSA. I've got my MCSE on Windows Server 2012. Now we've got upgrade paths. Uh, if you've got an MCSA or an MCSE uh, from a previous version or previous technology, there is a path so that you don't have to take as many exams. And the main exam here is exam 417. 417 saves you three exams, okay? So instead of taking exam 410, 411, and 412, you can take exam 417. If you've got an MCSA on Windows Server 2008, or if you've got uh, uh, an MCSE on, or what we used to call MCITP, on Virtual Administration, Enterprise Messaging Administrator, Link Server, SharePoint, or Enterprise Desktop Administrator. So if you've got one of those certifications, and you take the 417, then you've got an MCSA on Windows Server 2012. Okay? Uh, then there's additional exams that you can take, 413, 414, or 415, 416, so that you can take your path to your MCSE on Windows Server 2012. So far so good? Yes, sir. Any previous exams, like uh, MCSE 2003, before the uh, 417? Unfortunately not. Okay. okay. There's no upgrade path from MCSE 2003 or 
Uh, was it even an MCSE? No. Was it an MCSE? Yes. Uh, from 2003 certification, there's no upgrade path to 2012. You have to uh, take the individual exams. Or I shouldn't say there's no upgrade path. There's no jump exam that prevents you from requiring to take the A. There is an upgrade path. The upgrade path is to take the individual exams. All right, um, so I mentioned earlier that there's a lot of changes and there's different types of questions in certification exams. Those of you who've taken exams before, you know about the multiple choice format, right? Most of the questions in the exams were multiple choice. There's a big effort on the part of Microsoft to switch away from that, to no longer have as many multiple choice questions as you've seen in the past. And the result of that is that today, likely 75% of the questions that you'll encounter in an exam will not be multiple choice. Or there will be a variation of multiple choice that is completely different than the old school type of multiple choice question that there were. So let's talk briefly about question types. As I mentioned before, there is a increased rigor in the questions. Uh, there used to be a, um, a rule in Microsoft exam development that was called the 80-80 rule. 80-80 rule meant that we're going to write questions about 80, what 80% 80 of the people would do 80% of the time. So if there was a question about backing up Windows, we would test about the way that people would, 80% of the people would back up Windows 80% of the time. That was the 80-80 rule, which means that if there was a registry key that you can modify somewhere that would trigger an automated backup, if I scripted and only 2% of the people would ever back up Windows that way, we wouldn't test on that because it's too fringe. And, and still today, Microsoft will not test on things that are really, really fringe. However, there is an increased level of rigor where today, if there is 20% of the people out there that are really using this way, and they're doing it because there's a, a true enhancement and there's a better way of, of, of backing up by doing it this way, then there is a reason for it, and there's a reason to test for it as well. And if that makes you more knowledgeable or more of an expert because you're able to do these things in this way, then that's okay for us to test on it. So there's an increased level of rigor in terms of testing deeper content and broader content in all of the certification exams. So uh, you'll find also that there will be many more case studies in various exams. Typically the advanced exams, so those that have the term advanced in their title, will typically have case studies. So a case study will be a long scenario, six, eight pages of text, that may include interviews and technical requirements and background about the network and infrastructure. Some of it is relevant, some of it is irrelevant, and it's kind of your role to sift through this information, and then you will have to answer something between eight to 12 questions about that environment. So that's a scenario or a case study based question. And so you can expect a lot of those types of questions, again, in advanced level exams. So the exams that will get you to the MCSE. MCSA exams will not include these types of questions. We have also what we call innovative item types. Innovative item types can also be referred to as interactive items. Okay? Items that you would actually have to click in different areas of the screens and things like that. So let's take a look at those. Um, first of all, every single question that you will encounter has a similar format. And that's very important because when you're reading through an exam, if you can get into a pattern of being able to identify the information in the questions that is relevant for you, then it will really help you sift through all the content. And the main aspect here is the question anatomy. Now the anatomy of a question always works in the same way. and We have a temporal sequence. There's a logical sequence of information in the question. We go from big to small, okay? from really broad to detailed, there's a true logic in the way that the information is presented. First, you would always have information about the network. Then you have information about the servers. Then you have information about the configuration of the servers. We don't tell you how something is configured before we tell you what you have. We always start with, this is what you have, this is how many of them there are, and this is how they're configured. So big to small. And that is presented in the business problem. So in the business problem, you'll have all the environment. Uh, that exists. Everything about the environment and the configuration of the environment. Then you will have a goal statement. A goal statement is something that is common in every single exam question that you will find. Whatever the question type, it will always have those same three words. You need to. Okay? 
Whatever follows those three words, you need to, is probably the most important part of the question. It's your goal. It's exactly what you will be answering or what you will be, what you're asked to achieve with your answer choices. So you need to install Windows Server 2012 on Server 1. Well, I've already explained up on top where Server 1 is, what it's running, what's on, what else is on the network, and then your answer choices will relate back to that you need to statement. So always cue for those three words, you need to, because you will find it in every single exam question. Okay? Then after that, you will have correct answers. We will tell you how many correct answers there'll be. We'll tell you it's a choose one, it should choose two, it's a choose three, and in some cases, we'll tell you choose all that apply. Okay? There's not a lot of choose all that apply questions out there, but there are some. And then we'll give you wrong answers. <coughs> Now, one of the things that I want to make sure that everybody understands is that Microsoft does not want to trick you into failing an exam. The questions are not designed to be tricky. They're designed to be challenging. They're designed to be discriminating. And what I mean by discriminating is they need to discriminate between somebody who's qualified and not qualified. Okay? But we don't want to trick you. If you're qualified, we want you to pass. If you're not qualified, we want you to fail. Very much so. And if we do our job well, if you're qualified, you will have that certification and you will pass. And if you're not qualified, you will fail. And that's okay. That's what, that's what Microsoft is trying to do. Not trick qualified people into failing. Okay? Misconception about the program. So first again, multiple choice items. Choose one or choose many. Straightforward. Nothing much there to talk about. We have another type of exam question which is called extended matching question. Now, an extended matching question means that you have a, a scenario or a question, just like any other multiple choice question, and then you have eight answer choices. Those eight answer choices will be repeated with other questions. So you may find five or six questions in the exam that have the same eight answer choices. It's not a bug. It's not an error. That's the way it's designed. You will have a message up on top that will tell you there are multiple questions that have the same answer set. We call those extended matching questions. Okay? What, what, what is the reason or what, what is the goal for having extended matching questions? More distractors, more wrong answers. So instead of you having a, a multiple choice question, we'll always have one correct, or most of them have one correct and three incorrect. Here you have one correct and seven incorrect. And what we do is we create multiple questions that are in the same theme. So they're all, if it's about, again, backing up Windows, you will have seven questions or five questions about backing up Windows, and they will have the same answer choices. And so that allows you to differentiate the solutions based on the questions. Case study. Again, case study, you have lots of technical information about the environment. You'll be able to navigate between that, uh, uh, all that technical information by using buttons. So you have buttons on the left, and you click on those buttons to see the various pieces of information. Uh, you have information about the network, about the configurations, about uh, what the CIO wants, what the business requirements are, what the uh, IT requirements are, security requirements. You have all these different things, and you click on the buttons, and you get that information. If this is a developer exam, you also have lots of code. Okay? In developer exam, we, we do what's called code analysis case study, where you have lots of pages of code, and then you have to sift through that code to be able to answer 10 questions. So now you just invested a whole lot of information, or a whole lot of time, to actually read through that case study and absorb it. So we're not going to give you just one question. After you're done reading all that case study, we'll give you 8, 10, 12 questions on that case study. The questions will be very, very short, one or two sentences, that's all. Because we want you to do all your reading in the case study, not in the questions. Okay? Next, we've got drag and drop. Drag and drop straightforward. We take something from the left and we drag it to the right. Typically, that means a configuration to a server or a server to a site or even a code segment into a, a line of code. Okay? Sometimes today, we actually do this with PowerShell where you have a line of PowerShell and then you drop, you drop uh, commandlets into that PowerShell line. Okay? So that's typically a drag and drop. So it's a little bit more interactive. It's a little bit more entertaining. We don't want you to be bored as you're taking your exam. So we're trying to give you some, uh, some free entertainment. Uh, hot area. 
hot area, you've got a screen, screenshot, and you've got to click one area or one button or one link inside that screenshot, which is the correct answer. Most hot areas require you to click only one solution. Some of them require you to click twice. If you need to click two things, then the test exam will not let you move on to the next one until you've clicked all the possibilities or what you need to click on. So don't worry, it will actually force you to click the right amount of options. Yes, sir? Yes. Uh, typically, we don't write questions that will have multiple correct answers like that in a, in a hot area. Um, but it is possible. And if it is, the engine will have scored it where if you pick this or this, it will work. But typically, we try not to do that. Um, it, 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 would be, uh, it would not be an optimal way of testing it. Because then some people may be confused, well, which one do I pick? They're both valid ways of doing it, which is why we try to stay away from creating questions like that. Next is short answer code. So a short answer code actually requires you to type in code in the answer field. So if you're a developer, uh, you'd be using Visual Studio to type in your code. You have IntelliSense that actually verifies the code that you're not making a, a typo. Well, actually, we have the equivalent of that, that it actually verifies that you're not making a typo. So you actually have to put in the code but it helps you the same way that IntelliSense would help you in Visual Studio. So you're getting the same help to make it as real world as possible, that you're getting the same help that you would if you were actually developing code. Okay? So imagine it's just a free form field where you actually have to type in the code. Another type of question that we have, and this is brand new, you've never encountered those because we're developing them for the first time right now and they will appear very soon. It's called a two-part analysis. So here we're giving you information about environments, and then you have different aspects of the environments that you need to evaluate. So here, in this case, um, you have specific requirements that an organization has, and in the table below, identify the server role that must be placed in each location to ensure that the business requirements are met. So I've got two offices. Which roles do I need to put in two offices? With my radio buttons here, I'm going to pick which roles need to go in which offices. Okay? We call that a two-part analysis. Now, this is the kind of question that you might have encountered in uh, college or in university. They might ask questions more like that. So it's just adding another type of question into our pool. Something else that we have is a code analysis question, where we give you a, 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 a portion of code, and then you need to identify what the code does. So if I'm a developer and I go in and somebody presents me some code, I need to evaluate the code and be able to tell you what's wrong, what's working, what's not working, what the code does. Well, that's what we're doing here. So we'll give you a whole bunch of statements, and you'll say whether it's true or not that the code is doing that. Okay? And so we're having now actually questions that have answer choices that are statements. The code does this. The environment does that. This server is distributing IP addresses to all the clients. These are statements. And then you will say yes or no if these statements are true, kind of like a true-false. Okay? So this is a new question type that we're introducing in the exams. Um, we also have uh, uh, something called, in that same uh, spirit, is the graphic interpretation. Well, we'll give you a graphic. This is a screenshot of how the server is configured. Which of the following statements is true about the server? Or, how is the server working? And then here I've got a little drop-down list that allows you to fill in the blank inside of a statement. So this server always distributes IP address to subnet 1. This server never distributes IP address to subnet 1. You actually get to complete that sentence. Okay? So again, a different way of testing. These are the kind of questions that you can expect. Same thing here, multi-source reasoning. I may give you three emails. You may have a question with three emails. And then after that, you have statements. And you have to say which one is true. Now, what are those emails? And emails from the CIO, the CTO, and the CFO. And they tell you about what they want. And then you, as a consultant, need to tell them, OK, this is possible by using this technology. This is not possible because we don't have that technology, and so on and so forth. So you get to evaluate information. And then based on that, you get to uh, uh, complete statements. 
All right? So again, a different way to ask questions, which is different than the just the what should you do and then specific actions on how you configure server. Okay? Again, you, these last three question types that I mentioned, they don't, uh, they're not available yet, but they will be in the next few months. You'll start to encounter them in certification exams. Any questions so far? Good? All right. Didn't scare anybody off with the new question types? Uh, you see that there's a real effort to go away from just the standard multiple choice questions. Multiple choice questions are great, and they were great for many years, but we need to get to the next level. We need to get a test taker to experience things that are mimic more the real world. And what we want is we want the consultant, the IT administrator, the developer that goes in to take an exam for his skills that he's using on a daily basis to really be tested. Okay? So we're trying to make the questions as representative of what you encounter uh, from day to day as much as possible. So some exam uh, basics and exam tips. First of all, in terms of the question types and what you can expect, if you go and take a Microsoft certification exam today, you can expect 40 to 60 questions will be in your exam. Uh, except if you take a beta exam. If you take a beta exam, you can expect that it will be uh, somewhere around 80 to 100 questions, so much larger. Beta exams are free, by the way. Uh, this is for a regular exam. You will take about one to four hours to complete the exam. Most people complete the exams in about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes. It's about how long most people take to take an exam. The exam time that is available to you uh, can also be extended if English is not your native language. So if uh, uh, it's not your primary language to speak English and you want to take the exam in English, you can request to have an extension of time. The, most of the exams are translated into many, many languages, um, but the exams are all developed in English. And so the translation happens after in other languages. Once you finish the exam questions, you can go back and review your answers. So you can mark your questions, and then you can review them at the end of the exam. It's very good to go back and to review your question. It definitely helps you into the process. Um, not between case studies. So if you finish the questions in one case study, you can go to another case study to review those questions. Only at the end of your case study can you go in and review back the questions of your case study. Uh, passing score, every exam has the same passing score. It's 700. That doesn't mean that 70% is the passing score for all exams. It's different. The questions are weighed differently, and in order to have a unified experience, the passing score is always 700. But in some exams, you may need to get 40 questions right to pass. Other exams, you may need to get 32 questions right in order to pass. It depends. And Microsoft doesn't release that information. So you will never really know what is the passing requirement on your exam. You just know whether you got more than 700 or less than 700. Okay? So, um, scoring. Each exam has a cut score, as I mentioned. This is a specific number of questions that is required in order to pass. Each question is worth one point. So they're weighed equally. Okay? So when you're taking the exam, each question is worth one point. No, no one question is worth more than the next. Uh, sometimes one question has more words than the next one. And if you feel like you're investing 20 minutes to get, this, to get through this question, it might be time to move on to the next one. Okay? Because they're all worth uh, an equal amount of points. There's no partial credits. If there's a, a question that has multiple portions to it, there is no partial credits. Now this might change in the future. Okay? You might see in the future questions that have partial credits. But at this point, it is not the case. Uh, no points are deducted for wrong answers. So you get, either get zero or one when you're taking your, your, uh, your, your question, you're answering your questions. You will not get a deduction of minus one if you get it wrong. So moral of the story is better to guess than not to answer. So what to expect when you arrive, when you go in and register for an exam. First of all, uh, there's one company that you register with. It's called Prometric. Um, Prometric is the uh, testing vendor for Microsoft. It has global representation. They have offices all over the world. And you register with, with Prometric at Prometric.com for your exam. You have to bring an ID um, 
and you have to be ready to give away your cell phone and your bag. You can't bring any of that in there. You put it in a locker. And also, it is a closed book exam. So it's not an open book exam. I know that some people or some companies are experimenting with open book exams. And maybe something that Microsoft may do in the future, I don't know. Um, but at this point, you do not have an open book exam. And it's an important thing to, uh, to note. So in order to ensure success, we want you to arrive early to be prepared, to be calm. Okay? Uh, if you've never taken uh, an exam, uh, Microsoft certification exam before, a lot of people, when they take their first one, they're very nervous and they're very edgy, and that causes you to not do as well. Uh, be relaxed, have a good night's sleep, walk in confident that you study the required amount in order to pass the exam. You don't need to get every question right in order to pass. Okay? It's okay to get some wrong and just go in there with a relaxed attitude. Now, don't panic. That's a, a, a main. <laughs> from that. That's a main mistake that a lot of people do is that they'll panic uh, as soon as they start to see a scenario that is something that they've never studied before. And this happens sometimes because you're focused on various aspects of the technology, and all of a sudden you'll get something. You're like, "Wow, you know what? I never studied the integration of Link with Exchange, and I didn't realize there was going to be questions on that." And then they see one question, and then they see a second question on it, and then they start to panic. Don't worry, it's okay. Even if you're not a master, an expert on every single aspect of these technologies, you don't actually need to know everything about the product in order to pass the exam. So um, your first instinct is always right. If you're going to guess, always go with your first instinct. Okay? That, that's usually the one that will bring you into the right direction. And like I mentioned before, it doesn't cost you anything to guess. So if you're not sure, go with what makes the most sense. Uh, again, Microsoft is not trying to trick you. So if you feel like something is the right choice for you, and it probably is. Tough questions. Um, yeah, you will have, oh, I forgot to delete this slide. Sorry. I moved a lot of that information over. OK, some call to action. In here at TechEd, we've got lots of resources for you. We've got a bunch of guys that are wearing green shirts, and, and you've seen them in working in the hands-on labs. And they're working here as well. Here, they're a different team. They're called the MCT Ambassadors. These guys are Microsoft certified trainers. And all they do year round is teach people the various Microsoft technologies and get people ready for certifications. And they know all about the different certification paths. And we've trained them also on all the new certifications. And they're here to help you. They're in the study hall, which is right at the end of the hall here. And in that room as well, the study hall, you have lots of practice tests. So again, if you've never taken a certification exam or it's been a really long time, you want to see what the experience is going to be like, we have companies like MeasureUp, Self-Test, and Transcender that create these practice tests for Microsoft certifications that are actually testing the same technologies of what's out there. And you can go and take those practice tests. Usually, they're, you have to pay for it. Here, they're free at TechEd. Okay? In the study hall, we have 80 machines in there. You can go in at any time, and you can take the practice tests to help you get ready. Also, we have access to free Safari online books. So any of the books published by Safari, which includes all the Microsoft Press books, they're all available over there for free also that you can read them all on the study hall machines. Also, you have there the schedule of all our exam prep sessions. What is an exam prep session? Well, exam prep sessions are running here all week. And they're run again by Microsoft certified trainers that will get you that last little bit of information that you need in order to get ready and prepared for that exam. So if you guys know Windows Server 2012 really well and you want to go take that exam, before you go take that exam, I recommend that you sit in the exam prep session, listen to the instructor go through the list of all the objectives of what is covered, the bits of information that are really important for you to know in order to well in the exam, and then that gives you that last little bit of preparation before you go and take that exam. We've got exam prep sessions on lots of different topics, and I'll go through them in a few minutes. All available here, all presented by, uh, again, very good presenters that have been doing this for many, many years. Also, we have the exam testing center here on site. So you can take any certification exam um, from M MCSA, MCSC that I mentioned before here on site. Now, you can also take MTA exams. MTA, or Microsoft Technology Associate, they're even a, 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 they're a beginner level just before the MCSA. Okay? I don't mention them on my slide because they're not part of 
the overall certification path for MCSC and MCSC because they're not required. They're kind of elective. But if you want to see what those exams are like and what these certifications are like, you can take those exams here as well. The most popular exams that people will be taking this week is the MCSA and the MCSE exams, or that's what we expect. Now, because of that, all the exams are available half price this week. So normally the exams are about $120, and this week they're uh, half price. So you can just, even if you haven't registered ahead of time, you can just walk up to our testing center, which is just at the end of the hall of the, uh, over here as well. It's room 347. You walk in there, and you register for exam, and you can go and take it right away. Okay? We have our opening hours that are uh, available there as well, and we're open today and for the rest of the week as well. Okay, so exam testing center, study hall, we have the exam prep session, so we have all the resources along with the MCT ambassadors to really get you ready for the exam. Free resources and discounted exams, so that's very important. Also downstairs on the show floor, we have a show booth. Uh, the Microsoft Training and Certification booth, where we have lots of Microsoft Learning uh, representatives that are here. There's about 10 of them uh, that are here to answer questions on the certification paths, on your own personal certification goals, and also help you, guide you along the various certifications and see which one would be the most uh, uh, interesting for you and the most valuable for you. Yes, sir. Yeah, sorry, the question was if you've, uh, uh, could you have to take the exam this week in order to get a 50% discount, and yes. So you register, the, the discount is for testing at TechEd. Uh, by the way, you can see all the exam prep sessions on the schedule builder. They're all the EXM sessions, and you can add them to your schedule. So these are all the certification prep sessions that we have, the exam prep sessions. Uh, again, all the major products. What I've kind of done is broken them down by days. So uh, they're actually in this order. Um, tomorrow you have 410, 411, 412. We do a repeat of exam 410 because that's the most popular one for the exam prep session. We have also the MCSA on Windows 8. And um, then we have the MCSE on Windows 2012 on Tuesday. So Tuesday is 413, 414, 415, 416. That's all the MCSEs on Windows 2012. Then on Wednesday, we do the private cloud and all the Exchange, SharePoint, and Link. So private cloud, Exchange, SharePoint, Link all on Wednesday. And then Thursday is all SQL all the time. OK? Yes, sir? The other sessions are recorded, Yes. All of these sessions are recorded, or are going to be recorded, <laughs> including this session right now. All right? Any questions so far? Good? Okay. So I just want to mention something that's, that's very important here with uh, uh, testing is that you guys have a great wealth of resources in one place here at TechEd. Usually you have to go get these resources in different places. You have to pay for many of these resources. This is really a great time to get tested. If you've never taken a certification exam before, if it's been a really long time, to take the exam at half price, if you're not sure if it's going to be the right thing for you, you're apprehensive of what it is, it's half the price, this is the right time to do it, and you have all these people that are more than happy to help you in ensuring that you're going to be ready. So you see one of those green shirts? These are all great guys and gals that we hired here to be with us this week, and uh, these are all trainers that do this uh, 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 on all year round, and they love being here, and they love helping the attendees in, in getting them ready for certification. So definitely use them as a resource, and use all the free resources we have in the study hall and the discounted exam that will be great. So, unless there's any more questions, I'm going to hang around here. Thank you very much for attending. Please fill out the eval when you have a chance. Thank you.